Hey guys, this is part two in my two-part series of a DIY giant wall size Scrabble board game that we just finished building. If you haven't seen the first video, first video covers how we made the game board. Here's a little picture of it, but uh, check that out. It's really cool. I'll put a link below. But on this video, we cover how we made the wooden game tiles and the tile holders. So stay tuned, hit that like and subscribe. playing around yesterday with the new DeWalt router and the sign making kit to kind of test it out and uh, made a sign yesterday to just try try it out get a little practice with it and I'm not again I'm not doing exactly what Jen Woodhouse did because she had SVG files used easel and using X card machine which is a lot of money I don't have that so we're gonna use the router and the sign making kit to route the letters into these squares these three and a half inch squares she broke everything down into like a 23 by 23 squares and then fed it into the X-Card machine. So what I've done is I went and got half inch birch plywood. This was a true edge. This is about the only true edge we had on here on the board. Went ahead and started in a half inch in just so I'd have a true edge going that way. Marked everything off in six inch squares. So I've got a six by 12 grid here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start laying the, the letters out on these space. I'm gonna follow her SVG file that she got. I think she actually got that from somewhere else and blew it up to the size, but I'm going to Basically, follow what she did so I know I'm getting all the right letters and everything without having to get tr lose track of them. Start laying out letters everywhere I can. Start routing things out. And as they get routed, we'll move around and fill out other letters. Because obviously, you need like a bunch of O's and a bunch of A's and a bunch of E's. And obviously, we only have a couple in the kit. So, we'll have to move things around. So, we're going to get all this prepped up, taped down. And then we'll start writing out letters. Okay. Through much trial and error, because we can't measure and we can't draw straight lines, even with straight tools. Finally got our grid work done. We laid out our letters and then some of the things that I learned just from using this template and building signs is that for me anyway, if you guys do this all the time, you know, may not be an issue for you, but I wanted to put a spacer on either side of my letters and sometimes I was going to do uh, just another letter, flip them upside down as I work them because I, I just want a flat surface on both sides of my letter so I don't tend to tip the router or anything like that. So that's why we did that, which means you can really only do every other letter to get them lined up properly. We basically put a line uh, about seven sixteenths of an inch above the three and a half inch square. And that was where the top of the two and a quarter inch uh, sign templates would line up. Okay. So we've got the first row taped down and you could, we could have taped like every other row and which we plan to do, but we just want to do a trial run with this uh, with spacers on them. And there's a two part letter, this B here. That's why it looks goofy. We're going to go ahead and route this row out, see how it works and then start taping things down. And the more you can tape down in one shot, the faster things will go. All right, so getting the hang of it, I did uh, two rows, and of course, like I said, I was I'm spacing them out just to give my myself the extra space on either side, and so we're gonna come back and pick up the other letters. But overall, I think it's turning out pretty good. Uh, we're gonna paint inside these letters, and we're actually using some stencils, uh, some stencils to draw in the uh, numbers on here or paint the numbers on here as well. So far, it's looking out looking pretty good, and I think this is doable, and I think we're gonna have a winner when we're done. Just take your time with it if you're going to do this. It is kind of tedious. Take your time with it and I think it's going to work out. Okay, so using Jen's template, again, I'm not sure why the letters were rearranged the way they were. It's not exactly, I didn't lay it out exactly this plan, but these are the final two. She did like 23 by 23 inch panels and ran them through X Carve, and I just did two, basically two by four sheets of plywood. And so this is the second or the third and fourth of her panels, if you will. Burger things up here, I tried to reuse some tape and it just wouldn't stick. And when I was trying to do a finish off that R, the whole template slid on me. So lesson learned on that one, X is out on that one. But I had plenty of space, I just stuck another R over here. And uh, a second, that last, uh, her last quadrant really just had the letters for the Scrabble that goes on the left-hand side. But I burgered up a V along the way, I burgered up an X along the way. So I went ahead and uh, fixed that stuff. Basically from messing with my sign making kit, you kind of see I got a little 
furry here, a little fuzzy stuff. So basically just a little little bit of sandpaper on my finger. I just etched that all out and it'll come out no problem. And then uh, gotta finish the next board and then we'll start the painting. All right, so after we've routed everything out, you can kind of see, you do have a lot of fuzz left over from the bits. And I don't know if it's just this is plywood or if this is just the um, the speed of the bit I was using. But basically we gotta go in and we gotta clean them up like these letters, okay? And basically what, what I'm doing right now is just kind of taking a little 150 grit sandpaper and just working those edges and getting them cleaned up really nice. So, cause you don't want a lot of junk in there when you're gonna paint this stuff. So that's basically what's going on for every one of these letters. And then the tedious task of painting all these letters. And basically, you know, there's gonna be some spillage on the paint, as you can see in some places over here, but you want the paint to come all the way to the top edge. And so you're gonna get a little spillage, but once it's all painted in one sheet like this, we can sand this really easy. And I think Jen mentioned that in her blog, she actually cut all the letters out first and uh, then it was kind of a pain to sand everything, but now I can just take the orbital across this entire board, and we got like two of the boards and like this extra one here that we cut because we were using a sample to try out. So yeah, we'll take the orbital sander, sand this off. It should clean up all these edges where the paint kind of overflowed, and it should be pretty good at that point. All right, so you know, we did a test with one of those magnets. So I ordered another 100 magnets. So I've got some spares, and I started pulling them out, and oh, I got magnetic cardboard. <laughs> so they're strong enough to work through the cardboard here but i think there's a 10 pack of magnets in each one of these boxes so these are the magnets that we're going to be putting on the back of all these letters all right so, so everything's painted here that was a messed up r and i messed up so i'm not worried about that one i did some extras threw an extra r over there i think or some an extra r there there now in jen's blog she used an x card machine i used a router to write out the letters but she also had the x card machine carve a little groove down these lines right so I've got pencil marks. Now I need to go ahead and, you know, the whole point she said was um, if she does it over, she would have sanded the whole thing down before she cut them into individual letters. And I thought, yeah, that's great. And that was my plan until I just had the realization that as I go to sand this down, my lines are gone. And at least my lines, I mean, I know the dimensions and all, but if something's out of square, at least I see that when I'm cutting on the table saw. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, and rip this down into length. And then I'll sand each long plaque, if you will. And then I'm just going to set up a stop on my sodding compound miter over there. And then just kind of chop them all into the three and a half inch spot. So, but, but at that, that'll be fine doing that because it's still better than doing each individual tile. I can just run the orbital sander over each, each strip of letters, if you will. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this in a strip on the table saw and get this ready for sanding. All right, gonna go ahead and sand these letters down. Again, not necessarily trying to sand this down too fine because this is already finished plywood and primed and everything. So I wanna be careful, it is plywood, not to go too deep. I am gonna get the wood marks off and any paint overruns. These lines are gonna mostly go away. I'm not so concerned about that because the curve of the saw blade is gonna cut those out. But mainly it's to get this, the marks out of here, the pencil marks and this paint spillovers where you see like the U spills over, T spills over here, you know, the P spills over here. That's basically what we're trying to get rid of. All the sand is done at this point, so we're cutting these into the squares. And basically what I did is, yeah, these lines were sanded off. I went ahead and remarked them at three and a half inches. And really these squares aren't gonna be three and a half inches because we marked three and a half inches exact for all the lines, but you're gonna have the curve for the saw blade that's gonna take into account on, you know, on this cut and on this cut. So they're gonna be just a little smaller than three and a half inches, which is fine. You don't have to draw lines. Like I said, a stop right here if I wanted to uh, against my fence. And I was gonna use the chop saw or the compound side miter saw, but I got my cross cut sled and I'm just gonna use that because I can visually see exactly where that line lines up. That hole in this cross cut sled was made by that blade. And so if I put this right in the center of that groove, I can just easily see and make my cut, slide it down, make my cut, slide it down, make my cut. So that's basically what I'm gonna do here and uh, get these letters cut out.
So I just roughly cut out a little jig here to line this up. And it's not it's not perfect, but it's good enough to get it close to where I want it to be. And I've got, uh, I think I did a one and three eighths Forstner bit because those magnets are just a hair over one and a quarter. So I went to a one and three eighths Forstner bit. I've got the depth stop adjustment up here set. So it's gonna go just deep enough to make that magnet flush. So, uh, boom. And we're gonna now do this 109 more times, I think, because I got 110 total, because I got some extras that I cut out as well. Okay, so yeah, drilled all the holes, and my shoulder's tired now, okay? <laughs> now we're gonna take each one of these corners. I've got this router set up with a round over bit, and basically we're just gonna go on all four sides, top and bottom, to kind of give a nice little tile. Basically after that's done, you come over here, hit it with the sander real quick. All right, so this is ready, minus the magnet glued in and some lacquer on it. We're about good to go. So I got still a lot of work ahead of me because I got to sand each one of these blocks. Eight edges got to be sanded uh, or routed and then sanded. So yeah, I got a lot to do. We had a friend of ours that has a cricket, and I never even heard of a cricket until this point in time. But a cricket is some kind of crafting machine that lets you print on all kinds of materials and do all kinds of stuff. And this is vinyl transfer paper, if I think it, that's right. And she printed out these stencils on the vinyl transfer paper that we are using to put on each one of these letters and then once this uh, stencil is in place, then we're gonna dab it with some of the black paint. And we're gonna do this for all the letters. Okay, we're using this kind of dabber brush. We got a Hobby Lobby and you don't want it too thick, I'm told. You just kind of come over here and dab it. dabbing right there it's good to slowly layer the paint that's what I was doing versus putting on a heavy coat you ready mm -hmm. well, very nice and basically we're gonna do that for all of these letters that was a lot of work let me just tell you every edge rounded over sanded routed the stencil for the point values that my wife and daughter did. So now I'm gonna hit it with some of this uh, Minwax Clear Aerosol Lacquer. It's supposed to be fast drying. Gonna hit this with a couple coats of that just to help seal and protect it. And um, then I think uh, after that, we'll start gluing magnets on. A lot, a lot of magnets. So the next step, we all got a few coats of lacquer on all these, on the top surface and on the edges. I didn't lacquer the bottom, but now we gotta get all the magnets in all these holes. So these are the magnets that I bought, and there'll be a link down below to which ones I've got. They're marked the, with the polarization of the magnets, so I'm putting the red down on all of them so I'm all the same. And basically I'm using E6000 glue, this stuff right here, and I've used this in other projects, and my daughter's using a lot of stuff, and it's industrial strength, unbreakable bond, it says. And so on my test letter, which we've already used here on the L, this thing has held good, I've taken it on to you know, this, this table's metal underneath here, and you know, it comes off no problem. So I'm just kind of going through and putting glue down, pushing magnets in, pushing them all the way down, letting the glue circle, sit around, and, and this glue's got to sit for a while. So that's basically what I'm doing. And right, I'm trying not to use too much of this stuff, but it just wants to come out. And then when it starts coming, it just starts coming. Because when you push it, it's all going to kind of lay down flat. And I'll do several of these at a time here. And actually, it's kind of handy having a metal table underneath me because these magnets are wanting to pull down to the table. And I'm just pushing really hard down to try to get it as flush as I can. And they may maybe I'm about a little bit. That'll be fine. And 
and really just by pushing i'm just trying to push that glue all around but yeah you can see from the rest of the table here i got a lot of magnets i gotta glue down this is the face of a man at his lowest point <sighs> all right y'all so the deal is in jen's vlog if you notice in the picture of vlog she used four small magnets in each corner and said it didn't work and then she said she went back and found these big magnets and she she felt like this big magnet is all you need so back home went ahead and drilled all those magnets screwed them in or uh, glued them in and out of the hundred tiles 20 percent of them held tight to every square on the board so i found the worst squares that had the least magnetism magnetism or whatever word you want to use there magnetic draw and i kind of tested them all over the place and 20 out of 100, so 20% roughly is what, well, 20 out of 100 is 20%, not roughly, exactly. So 20% exactly worked, it means 80% did not, and they slide down the board. So what I'm doing now is I'm going back, I bought a boatload of these three quarter inch magnets from Home Depot, because I can't order them online right now, because I got to get it done and I'm out of town. I had to get this little cheapy Harbor Freight drill press, and now I'm drilling holes, we're testing them. Some only need one, some need two, some need three, I haven't had any four yet, and so we're going back and uh, getting it done because I want it to work and I want it to work well. So that's so what I'm telling you is you need a lot more magnets. <laughs> All right, guys. So here's like the first letter that I set up. I need something to hold it. And at first, I was going to try to design something like the board that comes with Scrabble, you know. And but then I started looking at it and I was looking at how to carve it out. It'd just be heavy because it's got to be like two foot long for this thing. I don't want it to be heavy, you know, for people. But I do want a paddle so they can keep all their stuff to it. But it needs to be magnetic. So I did some searching through my heat pile and I came across this old canopy. It's no longer used. Canopy's been ripped off. And, and I started cutting on cutting these bars out because lo and behold, it sticks. But then after I did some cutting on it, I realized, oh, these posts were actually up inside here. And so I just pulled these out. And so I think what I'm going to do is uh, use these. They stick pretty good. I need 24 inches to hold the seven letters. And I'll probably put an extension on it. And then what I'm going to do is uh, I'm probably going to plug. I'm going to cut it. There'll obviously, be rough edges. I'm going to try to uh, grind those a little bit smoother. And then I'm probably going to put some foam on the either end of it, and then put it in some plastic dip to cover up all the rough edges. And so there'll be a rubber edge on either side, and maybe at the top drill a hole, and then have a hook on the the game board there to hang these from. So that's kind of my thoughts at this point. So I'm going to go with it and see what happens. All right. So I think I'm going to show you what I was doing with this. Just some scrap tubing metal from some kind of a big old you know, eight by 10 canopy kind of thing I had laying around. I uh, got all the paint off, painted it with some Rust-Oleum, different color with primer paint. But then once we got up here, we decided, hey, let's match the colors that are on the scarf board already. So my daughter repainted them. We found these little, uh, I think they were one and a quarter inch rubber caps put on each other because it is metal. I did kind of grind them to kind of smooth them out, but this makes a nice safe thing here, rubber ends here. And then drill a hole and uh, put some paracord in it. And this is basically for the players, right? So these are big tiles. So here's kind of an example of what it looks like, right? So it's holding the seven tiles on there that you need, right? And the idea is, you know, the players can sit there with their tiles and spread around the room and all that kind of stuff. And hey, this is a vacation rental cabin. So hey, you know, the family wants to go out to eat and they're in the middle of a game, no big deal. They can all hang them backwards and know their respective colors and come back and finish the game later. So that's kind of what we did there. It's finished. It is totally finished now. The one thing we did do is we, um, I got some sticker paper that you can print to, some Avery sticker paper at uh, Staples. And basically that I made the sign in Canva and put it on there and printed it out on a sticker paper and just put that sticker up there. And then the rest is a dry erase area just for them to keep their score. There you have it, folks. This is the whole kit and caboodle. I've got all my letters laid out. Made sure I have the right amount of letters. Boy, oh baby, this is done. I hope you guys like the videos here. Hit that like and subscribe.